Today we celebrate the solemnity of the baptism of the Lord. <clears throat> this is also the close of the Christmas season. And I want to give you in 17 and three quarter minutes uh, just a little taste of some of the key elements of what this introduction into the family of God, into the Church of Jesus Christ, into the life of grace and into divine life that we call baptism, this sacrament instituted by Jesus, what it is, what it's about, just a few little things. Most of us you'll know, it'll be a reminder. Maybe you'll hear one or two things that you haven't heard or maybe not in, in the terms that I'll present them. Um, what is baptism? Baptism is God's gift of mercy to take us out of a state of sin, uh, fated to death, to the domination of the devil, and the possibility of gaining heaven. Not just an earthly paradise like the Garden of Eden, but something much better, to be living forever with God in heaven and participating in his divine life. This is the first of the three sacraments of initiation, baptism. It's completed the initiation of a Christian by confirmation and the Holy Eucharist. Baptism is God the Father adopting us. We see in the gospel today, the whole Trinity present, which you don't see. You know, you won't find the word Trinity in the Bible. And you won't find out of Jesus' mouth a clear declaration about the nature of the Trinity. He refers to the Holy Spirit and to the Father. And only in a couple places do we have Jesus there, as today, at his baptism, and the Father's voice from heaven saying, this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. And the Holy Spirit descending in the form of a dove, the whole Trinity. That witness is there because of the importance of baptism. This is what makes us Christian. This is what incorporates us into the body of Christ, the mystical body. And mystical doesn't mean poetic or imaginary. Mystical means real, but hidden, spiritual, invisible. Baptism, the word baptizen, baptizen, in Greek means to wash. Uh, probably originally it meant to immerse or dunk or completely submerge something in water. And if originally uh, that's, what, uh, bap that's how baptism was, uh, it was, we're not sure entirely, but what became after a, a, a few generations to be the standard way in the early church, apostolic church, and immediately post-apostolic time was immersion, which is making a comeback since Vatican II, which means putting the body underwater like the Baptists do, head and everything, full on. And why is that? Because it's a total washing. Not a washing of the body, that's the sign. The sacraments are signs, but they're signs of something invisible, hidden, spiritual. Uh, your whole self, being cleaned up by God. What are you cleaned up from? Well, the domination of the devil, death, all those things that came to us because our parents, Adam and Eve, rebelled against God and were cut out, cut off from the life of God. The gates of heaven were closed. They were kicked out of the garden. And all the misery that we know, some of which is still in the world, uh, but especially those things that we call the effects of original sin are taken away some of them, not all of them, by baptism. Uh, some of the things that are not canceled. The debt of sin, the, the, from Adam and Eve until Jesus rose from the dead, nobody got into heaven. All the just men, all the saints, all the holy women that lived from creation of man until Jesus gave us baptism and saved us by his passion and death were waiting. They weren't in heaven. They deserved heaven. 
but the gates of heaven hadn't been opened because Jesus hadn't affected that miracle for us by his passion, his whole life, but especially his passion, death, and resurrection. Um, you become a temple of the Holy Spirit when you're baptized. Some of the things that are not canceled, the worst things, the fact that you can't get to heaven, that you can't live God's life, participating in God's own divine life, that's what sanctifying grace is. It's heaven beginning here. Uh, those things are, are washed away with baptism, but we still have to die. We have to leave our body. We still have illness and sickness and bad weather and uh, darkness in our intellects and weakness in our will and unruliness in, in our passions and our feelings. All those things and other are still around, but the worst things are washed away with baptism. Um, that's some of the high, high points, some of the main elements of what baptism is, this sacrament, the first of the sacraments, the first of the sacraments of initiation. Why are we baptized? Why do we need baptism? God could have chosen any way to reconcile us to himself. Why did he do this? Well, some of the reasons. It's a mystery, and I don't pretend to have the whole story. Um, but it's, the short answer is because he loves us, and he isn't willing to let us destroy ourselves and cut, him, cut ourselves off from him definitively and eternally. And that's why the Incarnation came about. That's why the Father asked his Son to become one of us. And what we see, part of what we see in our gospel today, Jesus' baptism, is his humanness and his humility. Uh, how, he, how he is God. It's easy to think of Jesus as a wonder worker and a spectacular man, the greatest man, but he's God. He's created us. We're not necessary, but he loves us. He loves us into being with the Father and the Holy Spirit. And then when we messed it up, each of us individually with our own sins and as a race, as a people, as one big family, the human family, starting from the get-go with Adam and Eve, our parents, um, he wasn't willing to leave us like that. That's why we have this washing, this immersion. And one of the things we hear, I guess we hear it first from St. Paul, but you hear it in the Father's, when you're baptized, what does that mean? What is baptism? When, you, when you're dunked, that's the way they did it typically in the beginning. Um, the reason we don't so much anymore, because we got away from it for a lot of reasons, but because it's uh, the logistical and, and practical uh, downside of that. Um, but it's making a comeback, which is good. Um, St. Paul says we're baptized into Jesus' death. Now, it's all about life. Here we are with the paradox again. This is to give us life. We've been dead to divine life because of our parents' sin and our own sins. Now, God in his mercy and his generosity is giving us life again, a, a, part, a participation in his own divine life. Baptized into his death, rise again, come out of the water, alive. A new creation, St. Paul says. Not dressed up, not a makeover, not pretty, not healed, but a new creation. What does that mean? I don't know. It's very mysterious, but it's very deep. It's ontological. It's your very being is different. You're a different kind of creature when you become a Christian. Um, who can baptize? Well, the primary uh, ministry of baptism is the bishop, as, uh, and the, uh, the, uh, as the bishop as successor of the apostles uh, are the, f the first and uh, most important ministers. But, again, again, because largely of logistical problems, because of the, how many, there's, you know, how many billion plus Christians in the world, most of them baptized, um, the power, the authority to baptize has been delegated to priests, deacons, and in fact, in cases of emergency, to anybody. What do you mean anybody? 
Could a Lutheran baptize you? Yes. Could a Buddhist baptize you? Yes. Could a Satanist baptize you? Yes, if he did what the church intends. Who can be baptized? Anybody? What, anybody what? Anybody? Anybody. Anybody who has heard the gospel, who has accepted the gospel, the good news that Jesus can save you. Um, if it's an adult, typically, now we've, uh, the way it's actually lived out in our culture at this point in salvation history, usually you go through the process of being evangelized. You hear about Jesus. You hear about the Catholic Church. Uh, you start to learn the catechumenate. You go through RCIA if you're an adult. Um, but anybody can be baptized. And in an emergency and in a pinch, all it takes is the desire, the understanding something about Jesus and his message and his gift and the desire to have it and somebody to baptize you. you can't baptize yourself. Uh, that's all it takes and you can be baptized. Um, how many times can you be baptized? Once. Why does that even come up? Well, isn't that obvious? No, it's not obvious. And it was controverted and made a lot of trouble in the first centuries, first three or four centuries of the church. Um, St. Augustine wrote a lot about against the Pelagians. And one of the things they said, and other heretical groups, uh, that at the t you see, in, by hindsight, we say, oh, they were screwy, they were messed up. But at the time, the dogmas weren't defined. This is how dogmas got defined. Uh, some people, rigorists, we might say now, from 2020 hindsight, said, um, if you commit certain s sins, murder, adultery, apostasy, you've got to be rebaptized because you've cut yourself off radically and for good. We've got to baptize you again. Well, it was debated, it was fought over, and uh, we have what we have today is no. Baptism is one of the three, three sacraments put an indelible mark, a character. The Greek word is character, character, which means a mark or a character on your soul, which will be on you forever. Um, it's invisible when you're baptized, when you're confirmed, and when you're ordained a priest. Indelible mark. Um, one baptism, no rebaptism. Now, we are at the matter of today's gospel. Why did Jesus, who was not only totally innocent, the only perfectly innocent man, person that ever lived except for his mother, and who was God on top of it, because nobody knew that at the time, why did he, he have to be baptized? Or did he have to be baptized? No, it was not necessary for Jesus to be baptized. As a matter of fact, his cousin, felt that. His cousin John, when Jesus showed up and presented himself for baptism, John, John who had already said about him, I'm not worthy to un, uh, uh, tie his sandal laces. And he, Jesus presents himself with all these sinners. And he said, you, uh, you should be baptizing me. And Jesus, what did he say? Oh yeah, you're right. I shouldn't be here. No. He said, let it be so for now that all righteousness may be fulfilled. What does that mean? Well, again, we make our best guess and follow the fathers. Uh, this is Jesus' humility and his 100% humanity. He wants to do whatever we do, be like us, suffer the things we have to do, work the way we have to work. And this, although he does, strictly speaking, does not need it, this is how all his followers will be conformed to him to start with, initiation. So he wants to be what he always is for good things, the exemplar, capital E, the exemplar of everything that the Father wants human beings to be. So he doesn't omit even this in his humility, to be washed of his sins, which, of which there weren't any on him. Um, How about the necessity of the sacrament of baptism? Is it an optional thing? Even people that call themselves Baptists, who define themselves, and we got a lot of, probably more Baptists than anything else around here, um, they started about 400, 500 years ago. 
with the rebaptizing. And some of their main tenets, and they're, they're loose, you know, like most Protestants, see, there's a lot of variation. You can, you, there's all kinds of Baptists and they don't agree. But one of the things that, two or three of the things that started them when they, found it, when they were founded was they broke away from church authority, whether the church in England or the Catholic Church. And uh, independent, me, the Bible, the Holy Spirit, and baptism only of adults, believers, consenting, people who can give, not that silliness of baptizing newborn babies. How can newborn babies, baby choose to be Jesus' follower? Um, which had been the custom of the church since, the very, since apostolic times, baptizing whole families, which meant everything. The slaves, the kids, the babies, everybody got baptized. And with conversions, typically, when the head of the house came in, everybody came in. Um, so how necessary can it be? Absolutely necessary, as far as we know. Absolutely necessary, but, comma, but. And here's the but. Uh, the church only knows of one way to become holy, of one way for men and women, boys and girls, to be conformed to Jesus, to be adopted by the Father, to live holy lives, and to get to heaven. And that is the seven sacraments. And this is the first. This sacrament that Jesus institutes, and we don't see him do it. We don't see him. Where, does this, where in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John does it show Jesus instituting baptism? It doesn't. It came to us by tradition through what his followers, who we trained, the apostles, handed on. And they baptized whole families, and they baptized children. Now, there was controversy, and there was, uh, uh, like everything, it had to be beat it out, beaten out, hammered out, with a lot of debate, a lot of trouble, and a lot of questioning, and a lot of answering. Um, but children are baptized because their faith, their active faith, is made for them by proxy, by mom and dad, God mom and God dad. Yes, infants can't choose Jesus. But it's like everything else people say, uh, uh, well, you, um, you can't pick for your, your son or daughter when they're that little. You have to wait until they're old enough. It's, it's typical American stupidity. Well, how about waiting until they can pick what kind of food they want or what they want to wear or, or anything? Of course, there's screwball people in this country that do that or try to. And of course, the children end up very messed up. No, you pick good things that and necessary things for your children and give, the, give it to them. And that's the way this, the uh, infant baptism, it's part of the way that infant baptism is justified. Um, the church only knows that one way, the seven sacraments, and the first one is baptism. But, and this is, this is from the, uh, 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 it's not dogma, but this is the church's consistent teaching from the earliest centuries. God bound salvation to the sacrament of baptism, absolutely necessary. But he himself is not bound by his own sacraments. So we have a thing called baptism of desire, which means, it can mean many things. Uh, it can mean you're a catechumenate. You're just barely starting to learn about Jesus. You have a Christian friend or a Catholic friend, and you see things you like about that lifestyle, and you've read stuff in the Bible and you have a desire. This is the beginning of baptism. And for some reason, only God can see this in its interior reality. But if that person dies, God may say, this person is mine. This is my father's son. This is my father's daughter. They love me. The little they know me. They are my follower. They are my disciple. Um, so that's baptism of desire. Then there's what they call baptism of blood. Baptism of blood, traditionally, ordinarily, means you are a catechumenate. You're on the way. You can't wait for uh, Holy Thursday, Easter vigil to get baptized. Uh, but you're arrested by the communists. You're uh, kidnapped by Muslims, somebody who hates Jesus in the church. And you're killed because you won't Renounce Jesus Christ. You're, not, you're a catechumenate. You haven't been baptized. You're not even a Christian fully, officially, uh, ritually yet. Well, they, you get martyred. You get killed. 
well, then not only are you a Christian, but you're a saint. So baptism of desire, baptism of blood. Um, there's other types of baptism that are, that are not the sacrament of baptism. John's baptism, what Jesus received, that wasn't a sacrament. Uh, that was a symbol. Well, sacraments are symbols, aren't they? Yes, special kind of symbols. But these other things that are associated with, that are like, that are similar to, that are figures of the sacrament, like John's baptism, other ritual washings in Judaism, um, what we call a baptism of fire. Boy, you're going through a terrible job interview. That was a baptism of fire. Jesus actually refers to his own passion as a baptism of fire. I have a baptism to be baptized with and how I wish it were already blazing. He's talking about being tortured to death. Um, baptism in the Holy Spirit, charismatics talk about. These are all baptisms, small b. These are all ordered to, associated with, somehow similar to the sacrament, capital S, of baptism, capital B, which is instituted by God, Jesus, in his own lifetime and handed on to us. When you come up to receive Jesus, the, the, the funny thing is the foundational uh, uh, sacrament of the seven is baptism. But baptism and every one of the other six are all ordered to, and this is the church's teaching, this is dogmatic, are all ordered to the Holy Eucharist. Because all of the seven, six, uh, other six sacraments, including this foundation, baptism, are encounters with Jesus. They are gifts of Jesus. They are means to holiness. But only the Holy Eucharist, this one we're celebrating now, is Jesus. So, but baptism and the Holy Eucharist are very closely tied. And with confirmation, they are the three together that make you a full Christian. When you come up to eat his flesh and drink his blood in a moment, thank him for these gifts, these seven gifts, whichever ones you've received so far, especially for your baptism, which was your beginning in following him. And ask him to help you to live like you are a new creation. Because baptism, like all seven sacraments, has two dynamics. What God does never fails. What he promised to do, he always does. But you may not do your part and then you can effectively block the flow of grace to you. God means to make you a saint. And receiving Jesus like we do all the time should have made us saints. It's not because there's something wrong with the Holy Eucharist. There's something wrong with me and you. Ask him to help you to be serious in cooperating with the grace of baptism, confirmation, the Holy Eucharist, reconciliation, whatever other sacraments you may have received, to cooperate in your own sanctification so that you really are an adopted son of the Father and you're as much like Jesus as you can possibly be.